publishing has many paths and just figuring out where to go at each stage can be confusing. But with insights and guidance from author experts just like us, you can tackle the writing process competently and be assured that the goal of being a published author is within reach. Welcome to the Caribbean Authorpreneur Summit, the place for Caribbean authors to shine. With each staging of our summit, leading Caribbean author experts at home and in the diaspora share their stories and strategies to win with books beyond book sales. In the process, aspiring and published authors are inspired and lives are transformed. The Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit will ensure that fewer books die in the minds of their authors, more manuscripts become published legacies, and precious lives are transformed with the turn of each page. In 2022, get ready to create, thrive, and win with books beyond book sales. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to session two of day one of the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. If you were here for session one, type one in the comments and tell us which country you're joining us from. My name is Kamika Ruth Taylor, and this evening we're going to bring the fire. <laughs> so drop some fire in the um, comments, and I'm here with my co-host and the author expert. So I'm going to allow um, Raquel to introduce herself, and then we're going to come back on with our co-host. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. This is going to be an amazing, amazing session. We did it. We have done it before. So many people benefited. Time has been awesome. I am Raquel, our albino marketer. I am also a digital marketer. I freelance. I, oh my gosh, I do so much. I am passionate about getting people to overcome their challenges and to win with working online and i'm all and i'm also passionate about email marketing i can tell you that tonight is going to be amazing because we have some wonderful speakers here and i'm sure that you will be taking away some gems or some nuggets as we like to say so welcome once again all right so i trust that you've been watching the interviews and uh, just a reminder the summit has two formats, right? So we're doing pre-recorded interviews. It's like a podcast on steroids. And then we have the live Q&A where you can meet these speakers, these author experts, and come and ask any question that you have, either with regards to their topic or just any questions you have about book publishing, about authorship, about entrepreneurship. Just come with your questions and we're going to answer them. Now, Raquel is going to tell you what the summit objectives are. So go right ahead, Raquel. All right. Thank you, Ruth. So if you couldn't have guessed it by now, the main aim, like if you forget anything that I told you, the main aim of this summit is to get our Caribbean authors to shine, to win with books, to promote their books, and to create book-based initiatives. But I know that's long, so if you were to remember one thing, is to win with books or to create book-based initiatives. Some of the other Ob objectives that we have is to educate and inspire aspiring published authors. It's a part of our founder, Ruth Taylor's 2030 vision to raise up 10,000 authorpreneurs from the Caribbean and the diaspora. Can you believe that? 10,000 authorpreneurs and we will do it. To network and get the tools and tips to equip our authors to win with books and to win beyond book sales. To provide the valuable information to make publishing easier and more affordable for our Caribbean authors. And in case you don't know by now, when, when we want to, to make publishing easier, our founder, our host, Ruth, she, her first publishing, and I'm sure you have been hearing it throughout this session, her 
first publishing was extremely expensive. It it was just ridiculous. And the main aim is she never wants another author to go through the pains and the sufferings of publishing and expense that she had to go through. And for this year, what we want to do, we want to encourage you to create and to thrive with your books and not just with book sales, but we want to go further than book sales because one of the things that we notice and realize is that authors, they focus on, oh, I want to sell books, I want to sell books, I want to sell books. Well, guess what? It's not all about selling books. And last year, when we had the summit, so many people eventually wrote and published their books. I don't have the number in my head, but I know <laughs> Ruth probably can tell you how many people was able to write and publish. I, I know I can remember one off the top of my head. I talk about that book so often. I don't even want to say it again. Ruth might be like, oh my God, every time we're talking about Auntie Jojo, goes <laughs> Auntie Jojo goes vegan. But I tell you, and that book has been etched in my mind forever. So guess what, guys? I want to see one of your books etched in my mind forever for 2022 so those are main goals those are the main summit objectives but again if you remember nothing else we want you to win with your books but win with your books beyond the book sales all right and just want to say that we're using Streamyard. so if you want your name to appear on the screen rather than facebook user just click the link and give Streamyard permission and you won't have to do it again for another session um, let's do some shout outs. We have uh, Marva is joining us in the audience from BVI, British Virgin Islands. Hi, Marva. Um, we have, uh, well, Nerissa is from St. Martin, but Nerissa is one of our guests <laughs> for this evening. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne is joining us from Jamaica. And uh, Jacqueline, I believe Jacqueline is in Canada. And so it is good to have you. Paul Blake is back. He was one of our um, speakers last year. And just drop some fire in the chat. If you if, if you love this morning, if you've been watching the interview and you love the interviews, just drop some fire in the chat. Drop some fire on, 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 on Facebook because tonight is also going to be lit. All right. So it's time to introduce our panelists for this evening and they're going to tell you who they are in case you didn't watch the interviews remember go to authorpreneursecrets.com right under the first picture you will see click here to register once you click that a form is going to pop up just put in your name your email which country you are from and then immediately after you're going to get another sheet that gives you the password to access the interviews to watch the interviews daily go back to the website and under each day's flyer just click watch now the interviews will be up for 48 hours okay so Today's interview, you will be able to watch it tomorrow as well. The interviews for Friday, day two, will be released tomorrow. And then the interviews for Saturday will be released. If you've been keeping up, we're sending reminders, and it's the same access code every single day for the interview. So it's easy. I'm not going to give it away <laughs> right now because <laughs> we want you to register. You yeah. also need to... Be to register because at the end of the summit, we're going to give you an authorpreneur toolkit. It's going to have the contact for all our speakers. It's going to have a book that teaches you how to write a book in 24 hours or 30 days. It's going to have author website checklist. It's going to um, give you a pre-publishing checklist. And uh, tonight, some lucky person is going to win. It's going to win big. I'm not going to say what that is. I'm going to leave that for Raquel. But let's have a word from our sponsors just before we bring on our guests. This summit was brought to you by Point Global Marketing, Golden Media, Mind Food International, Web Dev Go, and Bamboo Sparks. See Ruth Taylor and the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. Thank you for helping to make this summit a reality. Do support them and or authors. The summit recordings will be available for free for 48 hours. But if you missed a session, get to the all access pass 
for all summit recordings of the interviews and the live Q&A sessions. Thinking of publishing a book? Join the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy to get the expert guidance you need to publish your book without breaking the bank. When you join the Academy, you will also access all the summit recordings. All right, over to you, Raquel. You're going to handle the Q&A session and um, the talk with our guests. Right over to you. Okay, welcome once again for those who are just joining us. So what I am going to ask is for our guests to just, and I'll, I'll have you guys volunteer who wants to go first, just to introduce yourselves and to kind of, you know, tell us who you are, what you do. You, you can kind of let us know. Let me start with Nerissa. Oh, we're gonna get a volunteer. I volunteer, Good evening, Nerissa. <laughs> <laughs> we volunteer you as so here's the deal, right? This is kind of like the Hunger Games, I guess. So you volunteer we volunteer you as tribute. <laughs> 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 or maybe you know what? I let me switch it around because guess what? You're the only lady, you're the only lady panelist here, not the only lady here. So let me yeah. sandwich you in between you two guys. So you see the first person that volunteered you as tribute will now be tribute. So Dala. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this poetic justice? Oh my gosh, this is this is terrible. Hey, well, uh, everybody, good night. I'm down here in Panama right now, originally from the British Virgin Islands. My name is Dallin Vanderpool. During the daytime, I work as an investment banker, private banker, dealing with money. And then if you check out my book, No Boss, Only Clients, which is my first debut book that dropped last year, it's also talking about money, uh, but specifically from the point of how to leverage the career that you have, leverage the nine to five career that you have so that you can make more money from that while you're building additional income streams that help you to not be dependent on that one income stream of your main job. So that's what I talk about. Money during the day, money during the night, money during the weekend, all that kind of stuff. So that's me in a nutshell, run a podcast and all that kind of stuff. I'm excited about helping young professionals make better money moves. Awesome. And what's the name of your podcast? You say you run a podcast. What's the name? The current the, the, the current name <laughs> the current name is Careers and Cashflow, but we're actually in the process of rebranding now to find something that that leans even more towards the money stuff. So if you just go in in Spotify anywhere the potty places, potty poddy, P O D D Y, podcasty places to be clear. Just type in my name and you'll find the podcast or whatever the name is we change it to in a couple of days. All right. Awesome. And I'm sure I'm sure we will have loads of questions for you, Dalan, because trust me, who doesn't want to know how to leverage a nine to five and make some cash? Hello, money, money. Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Nerissa, you are up next. That went so far. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> so happy to be here. I am live from St. Martin uh, this week. Uh, in fact, I've been here now almost a whole month. It's been nice to be back home. It's, it, this is where I grew up, although I was born in Montserrat. So I've been mm -hmm. spending Christmas with the family um, and kind of got extended. <laughs> so I'm still here. Uh, but happy to be here, part of the summit. I am an author. I am a storyteller. I am a motivator. I think my biggest passion is just helping other people, one, have hope, one, and two, believe in themselves and just help them be able to express the highest form of whatever God created them for, for them to be. Uh, storytelling is the way that I have found that I can do that most effectively. And I think there's so many amazing stories to tell about our Caribbean people and um, to help leverage all of the capacity that we have. And that's really my mission. I do that through my book. I also do that through my company, Golden Media, and also through Truly Caribbean Academy, which is my new um, online learning space that's just being built out. Um, to teach some of these principles as well. And I'm so happy to be here and looking forward to being with all of the panelists tonight. Awesome. Thank you. And guys, if you have any questions, that maybe you can start typing them down so that once, because once we are finished with Javet's introduction, then we're going to be moving straight into the question and answer session so just you know know like whatever questions like even if our panelists said something even if you just want to ask them what do you do or tell me more like just put the questions there so that i mean this morning we had fun we had the questions coming in so let's continue that 
So Javet, over to you. Well, um, good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Javet Nixon. I am from Jamaica, and though I'm not in Jamaica right now, I'm in a very, very cool place called Enfield, Massachusetts, um, um, New Hampshire, sorry. Um, but Jamaica is home. Uh, I, I run, I've been a serial entrepreneur. I run a marketing and branding firm. We have an office in Trinidad, we have an office in Jamaica, and we have an office in the US. Um, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years, um, working with businesses, um, working with entrepreneurs to scale their businesses. Um, as the name um, suggests, the point of my business is global marketing. So everything that has to do with marketing and scaling a business is what I do. And March of this year, um, I will become a published author. Um, it's my first book, From the Margins, that talks about how do you scale and how do you And uh, that process has been amazing. And uh, I'm just looking forward to talking about it tonight and learning from everybody um, and, and also sharing as well. So um, that's me. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Javed. So, oh, so Marva is saying good to meet you. Looking forward. To, okay, great. So, um, <clears throat> guys, we do have a very special prize. I don't even want to say, but I can tell you this prize is literally worth thousands of dollars. Can the panelists win the prize as well? Or what's the, what is what exactly the rules? <laughs> Don't, don't, don't announce it yet. Don't, don't ask yet. Don't I want it. you guys to stay to the yeah, end. To the but end, I right. I can tell you, this prize, I swear, I I have been, I, I had to pay for this prize. <laughs> you understand? I had to pay and it was worth every penny. Whoa. So... You're going to love it. All right. So I am waiting to see. I know Ruth will yeah, I'm gonna bring show up any them questions. Books, yes, okay, go ahead. The, the books for this evening of these author experts. So here we go. You want to bamba? You wanna G with the big boys? I just want to point out how Javet had some Korean fever there with the Big Dog song. I just want to, I just want to make sure y'all saw that, right? Y'all saw yes, it was yes, like yes, the rest that. of us got like the, the the generic corporate music, and then when Javet came out, I was like, "You want to chill with the big?" <laughs> it's okay though. It's okay. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> I just want to oh say, God. just like this morning, we, we have some discount on the books. So let's start with Javet, who wants us to G with the big boys. His book is coming out in March, so it's on pre-order. And if you pre-order now, it's at $4.99. So go get it for $4.99. Um, the price will go up at the end of March or sometime in March to $9.99. So run, go and get it. Um, it's at $4.99. And then Narissa's book is also at four ninety nine, and Dallin is giving away two chapters from his book. And I tell you guys, I am biased here. Over the Christmas, I was listening to Dallin's book <laughs> on my exercise routine. I think I listened to that book about five times. The book <laughs> is I bought. I think the ebook and the audio book. I'm, I'm biased here, right? Thanks for the Christmas so, gift. I appreciate it. <laughs> go ahead. Go to javetnixon.com or Amazon and look for From the Margins. Go to Amazon and get your copy of uh, No Boss, Only Clients. And I'm sure Dallin will explain what that is about. It sounds interesting. I'll put in that one, Dallin, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and then Nerissa, start, grow, thrive. No, 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 I'm not going to cry here. But you see, Nerissa's presentation 
I'm not saying nothing more. Build a building to uh, a business to last. Go and watch that 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 interview over and over and over, and we'll get the book. So I'm gonna remove myself because it's QA time, and Raquel is going to rock that for us. All right, thank you. So we already have a question, and let me kind of scoot over to Facebook. And guys, so let me just in case um you might be wondering why I'm not looking directly in the cam camera or my head is moving up and down. So my book is The Albino Marketer and I talk about overcoming challenges and my challenge is I'm considered legally blind. And of course, you see, I'm not wearing my glasses because, you know, homegirl wants to look cute instead of being practical. So <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. But I have a question from, I believe it is J Jihan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And so the first question is, this one is for Dalan. Is your book relevant to persons who work in the public service? Yeah, so so when you check out the book, when you check out my book, the, the, the general premise of it, when you talk about no boss, only client, some people hear it the first time and they think, oh, that means you're about to be an Instagram, you know, Instagram real superstar. You're going to go out there and become an entrepreneur and, you know, do the Javet thing and just become an entrepreneur and be a superstar. The point of the book is this. You can do that if you want to, but it's a way to do it responsibly. So it's a reframing of the whole nine to five concept. Instead of looking at the people who you're working for as your boss and you're like the little employee down below, like, no, you are an entrepreneur already. You, you're an expert, you're a professional. And the person that you're working for, who we consider a boss right now, before you read the book, that person is actually your client because they're paying you. Just like when Javet goes out and he provides a service, the person that you're providing the service to is not your boss. They're paying you and that's your, that's your client, right? So it's the same concept here. Flip the script instead of thinking about these jobs as being uh, you're just an employee or whatever. No, you're actually a professional. You're providing a service and these people are your clients. That might be your nine to five. I look at it. That's my primary client. That's the client that I spend the most time with. And when I leave from that client at five o'clock or whatever the time is, I move on to the next client and the next service that I'm providing to somebody else. So in terms of whether it would work for somebody in the public service, I say absolutely. Yeah. 70% of the book is talking about how to do that nine to five better, how to build that career faster, how to make the right kinds of moves. The stuff that is not politically correct for someone to tell you, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you right here in the book because you know it's inside the book. You don't have to be politi politically correct. So you're talking about how to build that in there. And then the last 30, 40% of the book is talking about how you build those additional income streams so that you're not held hostage by that public service job. Because the thing about being in a public service job compared to the private sector, it can feel a little bit more trapped. It can feel a lot more limiting, right? But it's teaching you now how to leverage those skills that you're learning in the in the public service to do things that you might want to do, whether it's in the private sector, whether it's starting your own thing, whether you want to start your own business. Because there are a lot of skills I think you can learn uh, from being in a public service, for example, that a lot of us out here in the public sector might not think about. Maybe you're doing your regular quote unquote public service job, but that's setting you up to be a job to, to, to move into being a, a, a professional diplomat, you know, because you understand the workings, you've made certain connections, you've done the kind of high level networking that we talk about for a whole chapter in there that sets you up to do other kinds of things besides what you're doing. So, yeah, it's definitely relevant to persons as well in the in the in the public service. OK, awesome. And, you know, I, I love that because um, one of the things that a lot of people face during this pandemic, I know maybe more private sector than public sector is the loss of jobs. And so having that book that will guide you in terms of extra income. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. who would want I to think one that? of the things um, just to say, I, I really love Dallin's book. Um, and one of the things I thought it was so right at, at coming out at the right time is simply because um, for the most of the world, everybody's used to this. Um, the current trend is that people don't stay in jobs beyond five years. But in the Caribbean, we're comfortable, we expect that we're going to spend our entire lives in the public sector. But yeah. they, for a lot of people, there's no upward mobility in a lot of these jobs. And yeah. so when they do mm -hmm. want to quit, oh, God forbid, we end up in one, of, we're in one of those countries where the public sector now has to be cut. You end up with just what you've always had versus understanding how to leverage your position to really create more opportunities for you for that next move. I always used to tell my team when I worked for government, operate in here as if your next boss is looking for you. You know, I don't want you to come here thinking you're supposed to stay working in this department or in the government forever. Function every day as, as if the next boss is looking for you. And I love to go into offices and say, you, 
Uh, I'm going to steal your, your client, your, I mean, your staff member because they're that brilliant. They're that organized. I want them on my team. And they're like, no, 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 because I want people to recognize that you've got good people in your team. You have to take care of them. But you as an employee also need to be representing yourself in the best way. So it's a brilliant book whether you're in government, uh, you work for another company, or you're an entrepreneur. I also thought it was just really good at helping you to understand how to leverage what you have and position yourself for the next thing. So I say, yeah, get the book. <laughs> Hey, awesome. hey, let me just all say first right. of all that I'm actually excited to be on the panel with Nurse. This is this is the closest I've come to Nurse that we've been like Instagram friends for I feel like I know her. Like we've been Instagram friends for like two years, I think almost, something like that. Like a friend of a friend and in the podcast and we chat back yeah. and forth all the time, but I've never like actually met Narissa in person in hey. person. So hey, what's going on? <laughs> Connections being made here. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um Javed, I don't know if you wanted to say anything to no, that or the 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 all the points are, are really speaking to where the world is going. Um whether whether we realize it or not, um we are living in an age where more people will need to take um take their careers, um, take their earning potential, take their their create their own space for excellence. Um, and, and, and books like this can only um, lead, lead to those outcomes. And I think it's a natural progression of where the world is. More of how you want to impact the world is, is right at your fingertips. And I think um, this is specifically what, what, what a book like this would be speaking to. Okay, awesome. All right, so the next question, I believe, is from Cheryl. And this one is asking, and this is for everybody. So are the books and podcasts of our panelists geared towards assisting us with becoming entrepreneurs? So it's a two-part. Can we quit our day jobs? <laughs> I may say something about that, you know, but hear what? Let me have our panelists answer that question for their own stuff and then <clears throat> <Jump it>. yes <laughs> i know right <laughs> jump it gets volunteered as tribute <laughs> so, <laughs> your turn <laughs> speak. everybody who has ever heard my story know i'm mr quit your job um uh, <laughs> so the, the, the fact is i i believe that when it comes on to your ability to affect um change to, to really commit and to grow, to scale, um, then uh, it, it, entrepreneurship is the way to go. I, I see so much potential in Caribbean people uh, and, and, and our ability to affect change. We are, we are, we are excellent at anything we do. And as a result of that, my, my, my own view is <laughs> if, if you're passionate about something, if you really uh, feel like you're in a place to, to, to transform a sector to solve a problem, then absolutely go for it. I did it. Um, it's now going on uh, 11 years, uh, and I have never looked back. And we, we, I, I see so much of that, that in the Caribbean where we, we kind of have a little toe in, but we don't, we don't make the jump. And sometimes you can stay in a 95 environment and, and, and affect and, and, and do what you want to do. But sometimes to really get to scale, to really grow, you have to burn the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> I just go in the direction you want to go. I would say that um, scale is probably a, a good way to, to mark whether you should, one, quit, and whether you should go full time. Because you can quit your job and then go outside and you've hired yourself, but you don't have the capacity to hire other people or to really scale the things. And so you've only changed one employer for the next one. And it's, it's a tougher employer because it's you, you know. So it's like, yeah. am I, I going to fire myself? <laughs> uh, so you have to think, this thing that I'm going to do in three years, five years, ten years, am I going to hire more teams? Is the, pro is the solution that I'm scalable? Um, if I like, I live on um, on Montserrat, which has less than five thousand people. So there are only a certain amount of people I can I can uh, serve within the market uh, for a particular pro uh, project or product that I offer. So I've always have to be have to be thinking about what's next or where else can I sell this same service because there are only maybe ten hundred people who want the particular thing I serve. I offer at that 
particular price point. Let me slow my toes down tonight. Um, and so you have to think about that before you decide whether you want to quit the job um, that you have is look at whether that project you have, the solution that you offer is scalable and is it going to be able to do something that can sustain you and sustain your team over the long term. Um, Nerissa, I, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Um, Go ahead. Why would any project that you have um, just be built um, and scalable in Montserrat? Why? Why is it? Why? Why is it not? Uh, 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 what, what is? What is? Why is it only being be, being built and sold in Montserrat? Um, no, not, not to me. That's not what I do. I'm I mean, just saying. If I'm, I'm, I'm saying that if I were to build a business, let's say I was, I work like I worked for government uh, mm -hmm. in. In, uh, in Montserrat up until 2013, 2014. And then what allowed me to leave was when I recognized that I had enough clients, not just locally, but regionally, that could sustain me. Because I recognized working in the local market, only the government probably could have afforded to pay me consistently to do the work, you know? And then you run into other issues. So I'm saying that's the same thing you have to do no matter where you are. Okay, think about your location, but also think about how you can leverage what you have and go further. I always tell people, the entrepreneurs at home to use Montserrat as the beta version, you know, because it's such a good market to yeah. test a product, to see if it works, tweak it, um, check out what the market is saying. And, and then once you've resolved that, then you say, okay, here, here's my product. Would you like to buy it? Yeah. I got some comments on it. Jeb, Jeb I don't know. I said this question pop up on the screen. Before I say my comment, I don't know if since you're the most qualified at this, if you want to just explain what uh, what scaling is for them. All right. So, so um, scaling is um, using uh, various techniques, business techniques, digital marketing techniques to grow um, your business from whatever um, place you have started it, whether it's a location or uh, space online and, and moving it um, to, to, to different spaces. That's as simplified as I can and do it. It's, it's really our own growth. It's how do you move into different spaces and grow your business um, as, as you move into those spaces. Uh, my, my own view um, as it relates to, to scaling and growth is that Caribbean people often think, oh, I'm from the Caribbean. Here is a small place. Um, I might not necessarily be able to scale. So even if, and for me, uh, if you even if you are selling juice um, on a specific corner in an island somewhere in the Caribbean, um, you can sell that juice in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in China, in Malaysia, in Australia, in the US. And when you go into the supermarket and you see those products on the shelf. Um, chances are it was somebody who had this idea around juice. Probably your juice even tastes better. But because <laughs> of this barrier that we create for ourselves to say, oh, we can't scale, we don't necessarily um, push, burn that bridge, invest the time and energy in developing your packaging, in developing your product, and in building partnerships, in investing in your, your financial um, literacy to get to scale. Um, the, if, you, if you go to Starbucks, they have these small juices that they're selling for $4 that they call concentrate, right? Now, <laughs> what is different about Starbucks selling that juice than a guy in Barbados who is chopping off his skin and putting that in a bottle and giving it to you? He has, he's giving you better quality. What Starbucks has done is created a brand for themselves, not put the Starbucks label on it, create a process to do that continuously. And as a result of that, they're able to expand and scale. For me, I, 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 I want Caribbean entrepreneurs and Caribbean thinkers to realize that in many cases, when you interact with the first world, every, most people in the Caribbean who are top level are far better qualified in the area of expertise than somebody in any country that you can pick out of a, a, a hand. The difference is the ambition, the, 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 the belief, the, the, the burning in the soul to say, hey, I can get there. Yeah. Yeah. Caribbean people, when, when they go in, into, into these markets and they sit around these tables, 
they, they do they, they, they come to the same conclusion that Michelle Obama comes to. These guys are not that smart anyway. <laughs> I just like that. So for me, it doesn't matter. For me, I, I jump off at a point where it doesn't matter what you're doing in the Caribbean. Chances are you're better at it than anybody you can think of anywhere in the world are just as good. You may have some things that you need to work on. You may need to work on packaging. You may need to work on um, understanding your finances. You may need to work on how do you do partnerships well? How do you build relationships? But at the end of the day, in a global environment, with a global world, with a supply chain, in a global world, there's nothing that you can create from a service standpoint that cannot be scaled through the internet. And there's nothing that you can create from a product standpoint that cannot be scaled through supply chain. So is are you making those linkages to ensure that scaling, that growth happens? Right. I, I definitely yeah. resonate with what Jebed is talking about and agree with it. From my perspective, where I sit on the on the should you quit your job spectrum or continuum is yes, you can, but I think there's a way to do it more responsibly and more efficiently than Instagram is telling us. Right. <laughs> um, I think there's a way in the way I put it in the book is this. If we're on a plane going somewhere and, you know, you, 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 you know, on these long flights, you're going from, you know, New York to London. You're like, oh, my God, this is taking so long. And that's how you're on a job. right? It's taking so long to become successful. So we're halfway into the flight. We're over the Atlantic Ocean. And I said to you, hey, you know what, man? This plane is taking too long. You know what you should do? You should just Steve Harvey it. You should just jump. <laughs> you should just open the Just pop the hatch. Just put, kick it open and jump. You'll be like, no, that's crazy, right? We're not we're halfway there in the middle of the ocean. We're going to die. I'm not prepared. I can't swim. So my thing is that, yes, you can quit your job, but I think there's ways to do it more responsibly. Why not quit your job, but milk the heck out of it to where you're leaving with a, a war chest of money, where you're leaving with a war chest of clients? What if you did so well at this job to where you walk out and your current employer turns into your first client? Right? What if they turn into your first What if they introduce you to the first net? What if one of your clients that you have now at your job knows that you've been doing so well that they want to put venture capital into what you're doing. I'm saying, yes, you can leave, but there's a lot of stuff that we're leaving on the table if we don't milk these jobs before we go out and become an entrepreneur. And also between like doing your job and becoming an entrepreneur, there's this sweet little middle ground called a freelancer, right? That people don't, don't, don't want to think about. That jump from employee to entrepreneur is huge, but you can ease your way into it to where you're not just jumping to go do your own business. But you're starting small and the business is building up to the point where you didn't quit your job. The business pulled you away from the job. Like you, you realize that now you've matched your income. Then you've doubled your monthly salary, your, your day job salary. And now you're like, hmm, if I were to put the eight hours I'm doing this into my actual business, then I can really scale. But that's a different thing than being like, let me go quit and sit in the couch and go on YouTube and figure out what I'm going to do. It's two different kind of things. Yeah. Okay. Again, I, I, I want to kind of ask a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, the premise behind, so if you're like me, um, you, you obsess over the ability to build something that is exponential. Yeah. Um, if you're building something that is exponential, it's very difficult for example, for, for, for as an adult, I have kids. Um, I like the beach. I like to drive to Elsha. It's difficult to balance, um, um, especially depending on your job. I was head of marketing and exports market, for example, yeah. for our largest paint company in the Caribbean yeah. uh, when I quit my job. No, it for if you want to build at scale, how it I, I get I understand where you are, but the, the premise behind burning the bridge is that you have no choice but to succeed. And sometimes that is what is required to operate at scale. If you have no choice but to, the, 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 the burning the bridge is actually burning the boat. It was a um it was it was in a story. And I, I'm gonna fumble the story. Oh, this but, yeah, the Spartans yeah. went to um, invade a neighboring territory, and the general says, "Burn the boats because we're not going home. We're gonna either die here on the beach, or we're gonna conquer this land." And oftentimes, if you're trying to operate at scale, um, if you're if you're divided per if you are divided purposes, if you're if you're 
for, for me, I was, I'm a marketing person. Uh, uh, marketing, there's no marketing job that is 40 hours and then it's done. Maybe, yeah, something, yeah, maybe somebody in the public sector at five o'clock, the, the job finishes. But a lot of jobs, especially these days, don't operate like that. People calling you, clients calling you, you have to work extra hours. If you really are trying to, to grow something to where the point where, all right, for example, I took a year off from work, eight years into my job, went back to school, decided that I wanted to travel and came back. And my job, my, my company was still alive. My company was still there. If you want to be able to do that and not be able to be just constantly on a treadmill, I am not sure. And, and, I, and I know that there's a, the lack, there's complexity in, in, in everything that we do. Nothing yeah. is the same, is exactly right for everybody. Sometimes there's, there's nuances to almost everything. Um, but and uh, so when we have these conversations, I, I want to recognize those nuances. I, I I absolutely believe that sometimes it's important. I work. I created Point Global two years before I actually went into it full time. So I understand the, the space that you're you're advising people to occupy, and I and I'm 100 for it. Uh, and and yes, that advice is very needed. But also. Um, and if you, everybody has to evaluate them for, for themselves. If it's very difficult to build a business, a business that operates outside of you, a business that operates and scales outside of you, a business that makes decisions outside of you making those decisions. And if you want to get there, it's, it's going to be very difficult if you have divided um, loyalties. So I, I, I preface my question. So this is actually the question that I wanted to ask. Okay. <laughs> so sorry about that. Because I, I, I know an, an audience, we have, we have, a, we have a, a complex um, topic here. What's that space? Because for me, it's important that if you really want to build something at scale, you have to jump off at some point. And you can't jump off when it's absolutely safe because at the end, if it's absolutely safe to jump off, you're not really taking a risk. Um, and and, and the, the, the risk reward ratio for businesses is real. Every business is a risk and there's a reward, um, which is why this idea of burning the bridge becomes, the, 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 uh, burning the boats becomes so important. Uh, what is that uh, point as you see it, um, Dylan? Where is it that that, that kind of jumping off point needs to take place um, and, 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 and making that transition. What triggers that kind of thought? Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, I definitely want to just show appreciation for everything you said. I think, I think just to be clear, for, I, I actually don't think we're butting heads here. I think we're actually talking, oh, no. I think we're actually giving two useful sides of the coin that you need to consider. Regardless yeah. of whether you're trying to stay in a job or you're trying to quit, yeah. so I think these, I think this is actually the conversation we're having out loud. The conversation you need to be having with yourself, right? Exactly. So I don't think we're butting heads here at all. What you need to do is go buy Nurse's book, uh, Javet's book, and my book, and read all three of them so you can have your brain. Exactly. That's what you need to go and do. What? But to answer your question, and I think it's gonna be well. <laughs> and Raquel's as well, and take her email uh, building list building course. But to answer your question, I think it's gonna be different for everybody. And yeah. I think the most important thing, or one of the most important things you said there, is that. If you're planning to quit your job and you want to go and build something at scale, you want to do entrepreneur thing, it's never going to be an ideal time. Like even if you wait another five years, wait another 10, you can wait another 20 years. It's still not going to feel perfect. Right. But I do think there needs to be enough of a pull there, enough of a structure to where you figured out you, you, you've gotten proof of concept. I think you need to at least have that. Right. You need to have, like you said, you, you, you had it two years into it before you decided to leave. You need to have at least proof of concept. You need to show that you can make some money. You, you, you figure out how to generate some sales and you need to feel like you've at least mastered a couple of the basic skills that you might need to become successful in this thing. Or you've, you've gone down that path to start mastering them. So I don't think there's ever going to be an ideal time or a perfect time is going to be different for everybody. Uh, but I think the most important thing is to really consider what it is you're trying to do, how fast you're trying to build it, and you can make that move at the right time. Or maybe you don't want to make that move at all. You want, and some people are comfortable staying in that space. They don't want to scale that big. They don't mind having both incomes or maybe they get a, a they get a partner who's doing more of the, the heavy lifting on the outside because they want to stay on the inside. So I think it's a little bit of a there's no perfect, nice buttoned up 
and so that he gave like you know this is this is the sign from god you know when 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 the donkey comes through and you're riding your donkey and you get knocked off by the light i, I don't know what to tell you there's no exact time yeah. but i just think there's a way to do it responsibly but if you're trying to do the entrepreneurial route yeah at some point you're gonna have to just uh make that move but just do it drink responsibly jump responsibly yeah you know or drink, um uh, drinking <laughs> so it's 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 i i'm loving where this discussion is going and um so i think it was dalan that mentioned freelancing so for me and i talk about it in my book the albino marketer i my jump and i still will consider myself a freelancer though i've had other clients that would make me entrepreneur and how i did it is and i tell people like once you can replace your income consistency consistently for the next couple of months and you've had enough saved to take care of yourself and or your family for maybe like three to six months, then no. it's okay to take that no. plunge. Now, I look at it from a freelancing standpoint, and you can be doing two things at once. You can be freelancing and putting things in place to start your business. But I, here in Javet, it never even crossed my mind. And when I heard him say, you know, there comes a point when you can no longer balance your nine to five or what you're doing in order to scale. You yeah. can no longer balance that. You have to let something go. And even now, like it hit home for me and I realized that he is right too. But yeah. you know, again, it's, it's kind of like a, a merge of the two because, you know, we're all kind of saying the same thing and it's, it's going to be different for each person. But yeah, you have to get uncomfortable. I see my lovely host <laughs> is back on the screen. Uh, our discussions are awesome. I see another question. Oh, yes. So Nerissa, because everybody else has been talking. So, so uh, I'm not. Marva wants to hear your take on scaling in the context of growing and thriving. I absolutely love this uh, discussion that we're having. Now, every because it does tell the story of this young man who has to do this. He takes a very small product that we use, an everyday product, and he has to figure out if he's just going to sell it on the side of the road or if he's going to figure out a different way to be able to do more with the product over time. And you see his journey taking it from this idea to scaling and um, eventually building something that, that's much more bigger than him. I think what, what Javan says is important in that um, one of the things he said was that he could take a year off from his job, from his business. That's the key part of knowing whether you have a business or whether you are just a solopreneur or a freelancer is can your business survive without you. So a key part of knowing whether you're ready to grow is that you have something that is teachable and it's repeatable and it's scalable. So you can teach other people in the company the systems that you use um, to be able to serve a client. They have to be able to replicate it as if you were there uh, or better. You'll find that you can find um, team members who can probably up-level what you were doing and then scalable in that it, um, you now need to be able to, can we repeat this in a different, a different location? Um, if you look at Starbucks or KFC or whatever, they've been able to take their idea of a simple recipe and franchise it, uh, creating the model over and over again. And so you have to think about where you want to be on that spectrum of, of, of starting a business, growing it, and then eventually having something that can operate without you showing up to work. And that's kind of the goal that we are all, we want to be after, where after a while, we don't have to show up to work, but that money is still coming in. As long as it, 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 you have to be there, whether it's in a physical building or I have to turn on the computer to write an article or something to, to serve a customer, then I don't have a scalable business yet. I am still the one that has to show up to work. You want to get to the point where you're making money as you stay while you sleep. Um, the example, like a, a nice example is right here what Ruth has created with the summit in that she started last year. We're doing the second summit, but now she's coming back to the summit with um, the academy. So you can go there and take digital courses. Um, you can now hire her and her team to publish your book. This is her scaling a simple idea of wanting to create more authors. And she's finding different ways to add new streams of income 
to that original um, service that she once did. So you want to begin to look at all of the different ways you can multiply your income even without giving yourself more work. That has to be the goal. Multiply your income without it stressing you out. Can we all go to the beach? Can we all take a year off? I, I, um, that one is gold for me right now. <laughs> yeah, that one is gold. It reminds me of Timothy Ferris, yeah? And yeah. So one of the, the things that, um, I, and again, I'm very passionate about this. Um, we, the, the, we, my, I grew up, my mother was an entrepreneur. And I grew up, my, if you know, we're, we're Caribbean people. Nobody works harder than Caribbean people. They are, they are, and we, we, this is something that is cultural. We feel like the all, we, 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 we have to work. We have to, uh, I think one of the, my next book is going to be relax. There is people, you, we're going to kill ourselves if we, we, we work. Um, and the way we're, we, we can relax is by, by scale, is by, is by economies of scale. Um, we, have, we have grown up in a, in a society that tells you that you have to just work at breakneck speed, consume a lot of American TV and Amer hustle, 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 kill yourself. The fact is, we have families, we are from beautiful countries with amazing beaches, great mountains, rivers, and seas. Um, why we, we cannot consume ourselves with, an, with this, there's a term for it, the artisan trap, where you're this furniture maker, you make a chair, you sell the chair, you go back, you make another chair, you sell the chair, you make a chair. Um, do what the Swiss do. Design the chair, figure out the different parts, ship it in a box, find a guy in China, make all of these, go on a website, as Caribbean people, we need to change our mindset from this hustle, 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 kill, kill, kill. And we don't have a chance to breathe, to, to, to think, to, to relax, to, 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 to figure out, to create, to, to just wander away, to get bored. Um, and and, and it's, it's one of the things that um, I, I, I'm really pushing against that, look, we can operate at scale. We can grow massive businesses. But you can also sit on the beach on a Monday yeah. and drink a coconut and stop and talk to your neighbor. <laughs> and you don't have to, to, to be like this constant race to a mountain and a place that don't even really exist. Because you're already in paradise. You just need to figure out the ways of being able to enjoy the paradise that you're already living in. Agreed. I, I want to point out the irony that Javed is saying all of this while freezing cold right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I respect what he's saying so much that I actually just pre-ordered his books. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I just put in my order on Amazon that just to show you that we're not, we're still friends. We, we're actually talking about the same things. There's a, there's a lot of Javed in me and hopefully there's a, a lot of me and Javed. I don't know. We'll see. But I got the book, man. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. I, I love it. Yeah, man. Respect. All right. So we have a lot of praise coming in. Yes, hustling is tiring. That's true. I, you know, when you listen to people and you see people like Gary V, and it's all about hustle, hustle, hustle. And you have um, one of the guys that I like to listen to. Oh my God, E. T. The 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 motivational the speaker. Preacher. Yes, and he's like, I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I don't know. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, I, I, there are other people who want that is important for them, but for me personally, I don't want to be that guy. Um, I think there's seasons of it. Like, yeah. I think if you, especially if you're yeah. scaling a business, I mean, let's not let's be realistic. There's gonna be that, you know, you, you, there's sprints. You know, what I mean, there's gonna be that three months like, yo, we gotta get XYZ done. We got a product launch coming up, so we ain't sleeping eight hours right now. But that's not the goal to be in that kind of like right. in the exhaustion constantly. That's not what we're trying to be. That's not a goal. Yeah, as you said, I, I am in the freezing cold. Like for the last, I've been here for the last two weeks working constantly. But I go home, and I'm gonna go to a hell shop and get a fish, probably on a Monday. Grab a, a beer and relax, or a coconut water and relax. Um, and the the fact is, if you're if you're building anything, you have to spend hours on it. You have to spend, you have to obsess yeah. about it, constantly think about it. It has to germinate in your mind. So uh, all of that is work. Um, and you have to put in the work. 
but the, the, the thing that I see happen all the time is, and, and it's especially in a Caribbean context, um, you, you, you ever get a grill guy who does a grill in the, in the Caribbean and you're like, oh, this is so amazing work. But he puts in so much of his artistry, is himself in it, or are you out a piece of furniture or a painting, and they put so much of themselves in it. And the, the, the ability to kind of figure out how to move from that. You, there's one day when he's going to be tired. There's one day when he, he, he needs a day off. When he needs a, when he's, he, 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 and, and how do we build those systems in place? How do we then take that guy who's doing his painting, digitize those paintings that he has done, and then sell print on a website so that when, when he's ready to rest, when he's ready to, to, to relax, he can have the ability to do so. Um, how, how do we make cups and put his paintings on it? How, how do we ensure that that guy who is doing... Um, so one of the, 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 the clients that I, I met when I was here is a guy who literally is doing stonework in the mountains. He's just building stuff out of stones. And then he takes pictures of them and sells the pictures. The yes. stone is his way of therapy. The scaling is when he takes the picture, puts that on his website, and he sells millions of it. So what I want to uh, try and, and, and kind of download and, and from the margin is a lot um, in talking about how does that happen, is moving from this place where you're, you're constantly, <laughs> if, I, if I don't work, I'm in the red, yeah. to, to, to moving to a place where, okay, let me let me let me get, let me get inspired by my new idea let me get my inspired by my news and and we we live in a situation and a world where through the internet through um industrial uh processes supply chain um through all of those things where literally you can do those things the guy who is building in Silicon Valley or in London, they ain't smarter than you. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> they're not that smart to begin with. You will, you will all work them every day, but they are operating with a mindset that there is a scale, there's a supply chain, there's a partnership, there's a collaboration, there's a, there's a sharing that needs to take place and then they get that scale. I think one of the other things too, yeah. as Jav, go ahead, go ahead, Narissa. I think one of the core things that, that happen, why we don't get to that point, and it's the same struggle that authors have, is that we don't value what we do. Remember when you started, Jav, and you, you talked about the fact that we're brilliant and we have all this capacity? Most of that stuff does food is out of us like normal. We get up every day and be awesome. Yes. So we don't actually think there's a price or a value to that because it came so easy to us. Yeah. And then you see somebody, you turn on your TikTok or Instagram, and you're like, seriously, you made money doing that? I, I gave away five of those yesterday. <laughs> and so suddenly you have to begin to rethink what is it that we find valuable. And I'll tell you right now, anything creative, creative, anything you come up with of your imagination, so a book, a story, a song, ask, that. That's where the money is at. Because any job right now, where I tell people all the time, especially right now in COVID, if your government job or your private sector job is operating without you and nobody's sending you an email and saying you have to log on, your job is obsolete. Yeah. You know? So focus on the things that you have to create yourself. And if you can understand that we are innately valuable and the words that you have are valuable. And so you need to speak. You need to write the book. You need to create the art. And then you need to tell people, hey, I created this. Would you like to buy it? You know, this is what social media allows us to do, to get out there and say, hey, I've got this awesome thing, piece of work that I created. Do you want it? And it doesn't mean that it's going to be anybody in your family, anyone you know, anyone in your island that, that is for. But when you put that out there, you put what you have on offer, you are going to do that. You're going to find those people that are going to connect with you. But I think fundamentally, we need to begin to see that what we create is valuable. Who we are is valuable. Uh, our, our Caribbean identity is valuable. And when we leverage those stories and we, we leverage who we are, 
then the money flows. But it's that we have to begin there, and then um, the world is our oyster. You know, this has been such a good conversation. <laughs> The only thing I would add, I, I think we are talking a lot about building the businesses and quitting the jobs and all that. Kind of stuff. That's great, but I think the other part that we're talking about scaling businesses, we also have to literally learn how to scale our actual money. So this is the banker in me coming out, the investment banker. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I have one client, Javit, yeah. and this guy. I mean, he started businesses, all the kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. But our, our, our metric for this guy uh, as to whether he fires us or not every year is: can we generate? Four hundred thousand dollars. He gave us a couple, a couple million dollars, and we have to make sure that without him lifting another stroke, yeah. we make the right moves with his money, putting it in the right places to where he sees an additional four hundred thousand dollars every year. Yeah. In other words, even if he doesn't do any work, we have to do whatever we have to do with that money to generate a new four hundred thousand dollars. So this way, think about the guy who has four hundred thousand coming in while he's sitting out on the beach. This is the guy who can come up with new ideas. This is somebody who can take a vacation on the beach. This is somebody who can relax. This is somebody who can do different things. So yes, we're authors and entrepreneurs and we're talking about how to scale the businesses, all that kind of stuff, but you got to find a way to make the actual money work. So no matter what profession you're in, what you know, public service, private, only fans, whatever you do, <laughs> you need to make sure you understand this money game as well because that's the part that a lot of us miss out on. I think especially as Caribbean people, we don't think about tapping into capital markets and understanding how compound interest works and investing in different things, not just like doing work. Yeah. We got to figure out how to detach the money that's coming in from the hours that you work. And yep. yes, you can do yeah. that through getting a staff and building a team, but you can literally do that by putting your money out like staff to go work in other places. Like right now, I got some staff working in Apple. I got some staff working at Microsoft. I got some staff, you know what I'm saying? So you got to start doing that kind of stuff too in addition to just doing the, the the building of the business. You make money from the business, put that money to work. So so my first job was an investment bank. I spent five years on an investment banker. Just, just so absolutely. Um I am I, I, I am with you. And the a lot of people think they have to have this massive amount of money to do that. They they, they don't. Um they they they, 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 they <laughs> I want to pick up a point that um Narissa made around how excellent Caribbean people is. I sometimes I, I I drive out and just stop and just watch um, Caribbean people. And the, the fact is, we, we ooze excellence. Everywhere you go, we ooze excellence. As far as I'm concerned, I can just tape, I, 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 I literally could just tape Caribbean women speaking to each other. And if, if somebody puts out an album of just Caribbean women having a conversation, I buy the album. Because oh. The things that they say and how they say it is art. Uh, and the same thing for, for just us. Uh, I think it was one of the big telecoms did a commercial about extraordinary and just all these ordinary things that Caribbean people walk past on a daily basis. Uh, and then other people would be blown away by it. And we have to realize that there's so much potential within ourselves to be excellent, to lead at top level, to be the use in both of anything you do. Um, and the fact is, for me, um, the only reason why you should not do that is if you decide that you don't want to be the Usain Bolt, um, so you want to be Mr. Carter. Or <laughs> so the fact is, we are if at, at, at top, nobody can catch us. At, 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 if you look at it, yeah. the, if, if you look at the U.S. corporations, top managers who look like you and me, Search their origins. All of them originate in the Caribbean. The father came from the Caribbean, the mother, the auntie, the two generate they have Caribbean influence. They grew up in a Caribbean community. Because we we rise to the top like cream. And the fact is, if we just give ourselves over to that process of excellence and, and <laughs> say we want to do it, we do it. We do it without we do it effortlessly. Um, and where, where, more than anything else, um, I, I, I really, I'm just encouraging everybody here because there's a, I, 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 this is such a good conversation and there is, there's so much in it. And I can just imagine from, regardless of where you are in your thought process about building, one of these books can help you do, um, do it. So they, wow. just, just go out and, 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 and <laughs> because, we have it within us. Um, and it's just a matter of 
finding finding the, the combinations um to do it so thanks thanks again ruth thanks um for, for putting this together and uh, i'm inspired <laughs> all right awesome. final question final question what yes, have you yes. learned from the writing process what ah. have been unexpected benefits can you each answer that in a minute or two <laughs> sure can i volunteer narissa for the last time <laughs> okay, I'll go. All right, fine. <laughs> um, writing, first of all, gives me joy. It's something I have to do. Um, and I've learned to recognize that if I don't do it, I actually get really depressed and I, I'm disconnected from my source when I don't write. So I've learned to honor that. Um, unexpected benefits would be writing has literally taken me around the world. Um, I have written my way out of poverty, I've written my way out of a domestic violence shelter, I've written my way into jobs and opportunities, just learning how to use storytelling, learning how to um, connect with people in a way that they can relate. So for me, writing is, it's, it's a secret weapon and it's one that all of us have the capacity to do. It doesn't even matter whether you think you, you know um, grammar well or all of these things. I really don't think I'm a great grammar. Uh, I, I have great grammar. I, I let editors figure that out. I just know that I have a good story. And um, I think if everybody can find their inner um, storyteller to represent themselves, that they can literally transform their lives no matter where it is at now. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, for me, what what writing has done, and I, I've I realized quite late that I was always a writer. So I always write things down for myself. Like I have volumes and volumes of things that I just jot, jot down ever from from I was very young. Um, a lot of it is business ideas. <laughs> uh, but what 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 writing has also done, and and. Uh, over the COVID period, what I've, uh, I've been able to do is kind of go back and look at some of my thoughts and my thinking. Um, and over time, it has allowed me to organize just the way I, I, I view the world and the lens through which I view the world and how I want to interact with the world because I've kind of written down where my thoughts were at a given part in my life when I was experiencing something. So for, for me, and, and I would say... Yes, I would probably put out more books, but 90% of the things that I've written will probably not, 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 not be put out there. But it's there to just help me reference my own view of the world and where um, my place in that world and how I want to, 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 to kind of um, interact with it. So, so for me, it's about, it's about clarity. It's about organization. It's about, it's about understanding myself. It's about processing myself. Um, it's about interacting with myself when I'm disconnected from the, the thought process that had generated those thoughts um, and being able to go, in, go, go back to it and, 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 and sit with it and figure out what that means and how it, uh, it operates. And it's also about connecting the dots. Um, for, for, there's a lot of things in our lives that we don't know um, how the dots connect. Um, and if we're, this is one of the reasons why I'm not, I'm, I'm not for the hustle, 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 run, run, run um, culture because you miss we miss so much yeah. when, when we don't have the ability to connect the dots um and when we do have the ability to rest and connect the dots you realize there are things that you think are important to you that are not so important and things that are uh, and, and, and and writing has kind of been what has allowed me to do that even while i i never really understood that it was allowing me to do that so so for me the process is really about connecting the dots and crafting a value system and a, and a paradigm through which I interpret the world and interact with it. Uh, I absolutely agree with, with, with what Javed is talking. It's definitely a, a learning process. I mean, for me, a couple of things that I learned during the learning process is that we can, we will make time or we can make time. I wouldn't say we will. We can make time for the things that we've that we that we decide are important. And I, I emphasize, emphasize the word decide. When I started out, you know, everybody wants to go, I want to finish the book in a rush and this and that other. And then you realize you got jobs, you got family, you have all this, all these things that are pulling on your time. You, you, you yeah. become overwhelmed. Like, oh my gosh, there's no time for me to ever do this. this, this. I just look at this blank page and it's just all nonsense. It's just, you think you don't have time. And all of a sudden you keep on, you stick with it. Then you realize like, oh wait, 
the, here's the book. It, it, somehow in the middle of all this stuff, you, you made time. So what I realized during the process is that, you know, you, you have these limits that you have on your mind for yourself, but you got to learn how to push those limits out and, and, and get things done a different kind of way. Like I was talking in the, in the chat earlier, this, earlier today, I realized like you find different ways to get things done. I realized I don't have huge chunks of time. I don't have three hours when I can sit down and silently and write because I got rug rats coming at me and <laughs> all this kind of stuff going on. So I had to say, look, I, I need to switch to an app or something where I can work anywhere. So I'm in a line at a bank jotting down some notes for the book i'm in the toilet jotting down some so much jet best chapters were done in the in the you know i wouldn't say which chapter was anyway but you know you just you just get things done all over the place um oh my God. so that's one side of it and the other side is actually learning a, a different level of discipline like i think i actually matured yeah. during the writing process like one thing is being able to do good work but then another thing is being able to stick with a project that you you cannot do. I wouldn't say you can't, but it's very hard to do, depending on what kind of book you're trying to do. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to pull it all nighter like in college and I'm going to take this out in one night. Yeah. yeah, you probably won't get your best work done. You got to be able to stick with something and really deal with the criticism from off from the editor and go back and not get offended or get offended and throw away the book and cuss a couple of battle with it and, and then go back and write it over anyway. So you learn that kind of discipline. Uh, unexpected benefits. I don't think I realized how how imp quote unquote impressive it is to people when they when you have a book mm. man i knew it was a cool thing but i didn't expect like when people react and they say like oh and i saw you post this amazon link you, you have a book i'm like yeah it's like what they, they, they're genuinely it's, it's yeah. like a mystifying thing to people and i didn't realize it was such a big deal until you become an author and people start taking you a little bit more seriously you can charge a higher amount for your speaking fees or the people want to hear what you have to say just because they see the book as a little bit of a okay you've actually taken the time to think about what you're talking about you're not just you know posting instagram stories or whatever it is you actually you, know, you have a certain level of, of authority that comes with the book so those are some of the interesting benefits i've had even at work i've had co-workers even this week randomly buy my book didn't advertise but they just send you a little chat and they say like hey talk, talk to me about this little thing here you, you can help me get out of here you know but it's just like it's, it's a different level of authority that comes with it so those are some of the benefits so anybody who hasn't done it yet man i would say definitely Get it done if you're in the middle of it if you're in the thick of it stick it out do what you got to do ask for support and and make sure you get it done even if it if it takes a long time i plan to do mine in three months and it took two years but it got done awesome all right and with that note because let me tell you based on how this discussion is going we could go all night and nobody would win the prize so <laughs> ruth i i know you've been sharing some takeaways on the screen and I really want to, I don't want to jump the gun and talk about the prize. So if you want, what do you think? Prize, you prize, 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 prize. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> um, we're having a little technical so challenge. You, Raquel, you wanna, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you can go ahead and ask the, the million dollar question and then the first person to type the answer in the you chat. You tell them the prize. Yes. Okay, so it's going to be two questions because this okay. prize is too important for one. And I hope you guys at least even read the, uh, what you call it, the speaker profiles because it is coming from one of the speaker profiles so the the, the first question is name three of javet's business so i'm gonna ask it, it's two questions because you have to get the two of them so <laughs> name three of javet's businesses that's one and in what year did he win the ncb capital quest Somebody killed the Jeopardy, the Jeopardy song. <laughs> you have it with two T's, right? <laughs> so, Kamika, can, can you ask, you ask the Kamika question first? again? Um, oh. You can't just put one answer. You have to put the three businesses in one answer. All the, the answers need to be in one. All the, the answers need to be in one. So, question yes. number one, name three of Javet's businesses. Question number two, what year did he win the NCB Capital Quest? Are the, 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 the presenters allowed to ask? Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm here on Google. Like, 
I'm here, Devin. I mean, I got, I got the answer. I got the answer. Go ahead. When, the, the thing is, like, you know, writing curse in life. Is anybody answering? Are we still Let me look live? in the Facebook group. Group. Ah. Uh, panelist show. If you yes. check it, if you, oh, okay, people. somebody has answered. Um, somebody has answered. Let me check who it is. I'll put the answer up, but I. Oh, wow. Wow. That person. Go, Cheryl. 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 Garrick Floyd. Boom. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Anybody who listens, Javet, you probably know that you know if you listen to radio, my grandmother is with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I grew up listening to the radio, so when you win something, congratulations. <laughs> and then you're, you won, honey, you won. <laughs> All right. Whew, I'm hyping it up. So you have won. Oh, let me hear it. Yay. All right. So you have won a one-hour consult with Javet. Oh. Yes. And I can tell you, I don't. Wow. Let's let's hear the song. And Javet singing? No, why, Javet? You have many All times. right. <laughs> So let me say it again, um, Cheryl, you are the lucky winner of a one-hour consultation session with the one and only Javed. <laughs> I tell you, this is worth, well, I don't even know, like thousands, because it's a lot. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. Congrats. Raquel, can you just wrap this up and ask them to give a final word as we think of author entrepreneurship, um, start, grow, thrive, build a business to last. Just using Narissa's tagline to just get everything in there. Um, <laughs> final 30 seconds advice as we bring tonight to a close. All right, panelists, go ahead. Everybody okay, well, let me start. <laughs> yes, um, a please big give part, <laughs> A big part of being an author is being able to talk about what you're doing, sharing your story, I know personally, I get really comfortable hiding and just writing, but we got to work on being visible. So I am launching a Being Visible in 2022 challenge starting January 31st. And for the month of February, we're all going to just work on showing up more online, whether it's turning on your phone and going live on your Instagram or finally fixing your website. And so if you go to my website at narissagolden.com, you click on the picture that says uh, Be Visible Challenge, uh, you can join the challenge. It's totally free, but I really just want to help you, and hopefully you'll help me as well, to, to, to be more visible, to show up and do more work so that people know about the great work that you're doing. So have a great rest of the summit. Thank you, Ruth, for having me. And uh, David, I just bought your, I pre-ordered your book as well. I really hope everybody goes out and gets the books that are, um, being shared this weekend because I think they're so powerful and it's a wonderful time just to position yourself for the rest of 2022 and beyond. God bless you. Thank you. Um, I, I think I, I, I'll just jump in and go next. Uh, one, remember that you're powerful beyond measure. Um, they, you're, you're, they're, there's no limits to what you can achieve. And if you don't want to achieve what other people think you should be achieving, that's also fine. Um, remember to, to relax. Remember allow yourself to get bored because in that space is where inspiration often happens um you can grow you can scale you can build um and and i really want to, to people to um to be aware of that um beyond that um from the margin um is live um and will be shipped on march 15 to everybody who has purchased and pre-ordered it um <laughs> And it's, it really is what I wish I read maybe 17, 18 years ago. Um, and I, I, that's really um, one, if you're, if you're thinking about doing a business, if you think about starting it, um, um, it's, it's, for me, it's kind of what I, 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 it, I wrote with and kind of thought with that in mind. What what's, would I need to know? If, if I'm if I'm starting um, so it's kind of a cheat sheet 
um, and scaling. Um, but the, I want to leave with support Caribbean authors. Um, I, I have enjoyed this conversation so much. Um, I wish it was happening every week. I wish we had a collective that would just jump on and chat. Um, there's an idea. <laughs> um, yes, we'll talk, we'll talk. So, so thank you. Um, and, and just remember, you're powerful beyond measure, always. Hey, All definitely. Right, hey, uh, from, 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 my, <laughs> from my side, I, I want to shout out everybody who's been on the panel tonight, Javet, Narissa, um, Ruth, uh, and and I, I, I don't know why. I, I thought to her. And Raquel, yes, Raquel N. Dot com. Everybody who's been out here rocking out with us for the past for the last past hour. Uh, the one thing I want to leave with everybody tonight is listen, there's a there's magic inside you, there's a story inside you, there's something inside you that the world needs, right? They, you might think they have it already, but they need to hear your version of it, right? There's there's a there's a there's a group of people out there who are gonna connect with something that you've seen before, but they're gonna connect with it differently because it's coming from you. There's a twist that you have. So make sure you don't fall into that self-doubt trap. Make sure you go out there and put out your magic into the world and and make it happen and of course i want to echo what javit said you know make sure we tap into what we have here in the caribbean i mean I've, I've found so many beautiful people so many intelligent people smart people right here amongst my own people mm -hmm. right instead of just being enamored with what we see on the television and whatever it is social media whoever it is there's so much power we have right here amongst all of us if we actually started rising up and instead of thinking of ourselves as this island and that island and big island and small island imagine if we thought of ourselves as one massive unit you know what i'm saying <laughs> we could eclipse so much of what's going on out there if we forget about the, the governments and all the currency things and well whatever just look like hey we can tap into what we have right here in the caribbean so make sure you pour out the magic that excited you that's inside of you on the world and make some stuff happen make sure to stay profitable and have a powerful day yeah all right, all right. awesome we want to thank our panelists and raquel for sharing and if you think if you got value to this just drop some fire in the chat if you got value just drop some fire in lighter, the lighter, chat lighter, lighter. <laughs> <laughs> um this has been wonderful i'm not gonna keep you guys uh much longer just to remind you that if you need help on your author journey that um, the Authorpreneur Secrets Academy stands ready to help you. You can get private coaching and guidance from me to write and publish your book without breaking the bank. And you can get any one of our books, which I'm gonna put back on the screen, to help you on your author journey. And we have a toolkit for you at the end of the summit. But big announcement before I put that up. Tomorrow morning is going to be a big session. So you, we all need people to help us on the publication journey. So you're going to be introduced to some author services providers. Do you want an audio book? How do you get your book covers? Go watch those interviews. We also want to discuss intellectual property. How do you protect those creative ideas? When you take the picture and put it on the cup and sell it, how do you ensure that somebody else don't copy it and put made in China on it? No, so <laughs> um, but uh, we're gonna have the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office in the morning sharing. So, and we're also gonna be launching Bamboo Sparks. You'll hear more about Bamboo Sparks. So the session will be maybe about two hours. We're still gonna have a Q and A session, but it's just gonna be a little bit longer. So come with the questions. Remember, go to the summit website each day, click the day, enter the password, watch the interviews. It's not just what we do here. Watch the interviews, which have so much value. And then come back at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. for the live where you can ask the questions and flesh out what you heard or just any questions that you had. So I want to thank our amazing panelists. Raquel, you are an amazing host and you all brought the fire. And I'm just going to close out with um, the book and our sponsor clip and uh, reminding you to take charge of your publishing, go penny to win it and dominate entrepreneurship. Get these books and see you tomorrow as we close out. Let me make a tamua.
them out to kin and go join cause ha, You want to bamba You want to G with the big boys This summit was brought to you by Point Global Marketing, Golden Media, Mind Food International, Web Dev Go, and Bamboo Sparks. See Ruth Taylor and the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. Thank you for helping to make this summit a reality. Do support them and our authors. The summit recordings will be available for free for 48 hours. But if you missed a session, Get to the All Access Pass for all summit recordings of the interviews and the live Q&A sessions. Thinking of publishing a book? Join the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy to get the expert guidance you need to publish your book without breaking the bank. When you join the Academy, you will also access all the summit recordings.